What's going on guys? Welcome to NetSec Explain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your very own web hacking lab using XAMPP and DBWA. Now, XAMPP is a cross-platform utility that will allow us to deploy web services on our local PC. It's much quicker and easier to set up than installing Apache, PHP, and MySQL manually. And of course, since we'll be installing vulnerable web applications, we're going to want to walk through how to properly lock down XAMPP to our local system. Once XAMPP is installed, we'll be free to deploy any web application we choose. A good first testing program is actually Damn Vulnerable Web App, or DVWA for short. So we'll install that for now. So let's get started. We're going to start by opening up a browser and going to apachefriends.org. This is the XAMPP website. From there, we're going to scroll about halfway through and we'll see the installers for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Since I'm using Windows 10, I'm going to be downloading the installer for XAMPP with PHP 7.2.5. The download's not too large, but it does take a couple of minutes, so just give it a bit. Now that it's finished, let's go to the download folder and run the installer. If you're using Windows and have UAC enabled, you might get this pop-up. All it's doing is warning us that we may not have write access to the program files directory. We're not going to install it there anyways, so we don't really need to worry about that. This is a fairly straightforward next, next, next install, but for peace of mind since we're installing services, let's walk through it. I like to do a full install. XAMPP has a number of useful features, and they're super easy to turn off and on so that you know exactly what services are running on your computer. For Windows machines, I like to install XAMPP in the C directory for easier management. If you can't do that, then your user directory will work just fine. Finally, uncheck Bitnami and we're good to go. Now, this installer takes about 5 minutes to finish, so go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee while you wait. I'm just going to speed up this video. Alright, the install's finished, so we're going to go ahead and start the control panel. I'm going to get rid of some of this clutter and pick my language. From here, the first thing we want to do is start the services to make sure everything's running properly. I'm going to go ahead and start the Apache and MySQL service. Let's jump back to our browser and visit our localhost. Here, it automatically redirects us to localhost slash dashboard and gives us a web page. We can click on a few of these links here, but the most important one is this PHP info page. Seeing this page shows us that PHP is working properly. Awesome. Before we move on to installing our web apps, we want to make sure that we lock this down so that Apache only accepts connections from our local host. I'll show you why. I'm going to use a Ubuntu virtual machine to simulate another user on the network. Keep in mind that we're going to be installing vulnerable web applications onto our system, and if just anyone can access our computer, well, they can do a lot of damage. So let's go back to our Windows machine and we'll walk through how to properly secure it so that only the local host can access our lab. To lock down our system, go to the control panel and open the apache config httpd.conf. I'll open this up in Sublime so that it's easier to see. This is a pretty large file, but a lot of it's been commented out. So what we're going to do is use control F to find and type in htdocs, which is our apache root directory. In this directory tag, we're going to want to scroll down towards the bottom until we see this require all granted. All we need to do is comment this out and right below it type in require local. This will tell Apache to only allow the local host to access web services. Save it and restart the Apache service by clicking stop and then start again. Now that we've updated the config file, let's go back to the Ubuntu machine and see that this does what we want. The quickest way to verify that our changes have been made is to refresh this PHP info page. Here we see that access is forbidden with an error 403. Good, this is exactly what we wanted to see. Okay, we have XAMPP installed and it's locked down to only our local host. Let's move on and set up DVWA. We're going to pop back over to our browser and go to dvwa.co.uk to access the download page. Scroll down to the bottom and we'll see this download button. This is linked to the master repo on GitHub. Once that's downloaded, we're going to copy the dbwa master zip and put it in our xamp htdocs directory. The only thing in there so far are these default example pages, so let's go ahead and delete those and paste the zip. Now we just need to uncompress this folder. 
I'm using 7-zip to extract files here. Once that's done, we can just go ahead and delete the zip file. We're not quite done yet. We need to configure DVWA. If we go back to the local host, we see this DVWA master folder. Inside, it's telling us that we need to rename this config file in the DVWA slash conf directory. So let's go ahead and do that. We just need to rename the config file like it asked us to. But while we're here, there's one last thing we need to set up. We see these database settings, but we need to change the MySQL root password. On XAMPP, the root password is blank by default. Not the most secure, but we don't really need to worry about this anymore. Let's save it, close, and go back to DVWA. When we refresh the page, we'll be given this database setup page. At the bottom of it, we'll see this Create Reset button. Go ahead and click that. The page will refresh, and if we scroll to the bottom again, we'll see that the database has been successfully created. Or it'll send you straight to the login screen like it did here. Either way, setup's complete. Awesome. Let's log in. The default credentials are admin, password, all lowercase. So there you have it. XAMPP installed with DVWA. Now, before I let you go, there's one last optional step we can do. On the setup page, you may have noticed this option for allow URL include is disabled. It's best practices to leave this disabled, but to get the most out of DVWA, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. To do that, we're going to need to go back to our control panel and change the configuration for the php.ini file. I also have this in Sublime so that it's easier to see. Press Ctrl F to find, and we're looking for allow underscore URL underscore include. To enable it, just change this value from off to on. Save it, and don't forget to restart the Apache service one more time. We can go back to DVWA, refresh, and now it's enabled. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm going to be using this lab for a number of future videos coming up. In the meantime, I hope you liked this video, and if you have a topic you'd like me to cover, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.